Hi, I'm Mash Ponigala, brand strategist and creative director at Spellbrand, a leading branding agency. Now, usually I create videos on branding in the sense that from the perspective of a, a business owner or an entrepreneur. But today's video is slightly different and from here on, um, I would be making videos of this nature um, now and then. Um, this is targeted at creatives. So designers, graphic designers, logo designers, brand designers, brand identity designers, designers of any nature. And I come from the perspective of having been there and done that. I'm not saying that I've reached the pinnacle. It's a learning process, everyone learns. But I would share some of the things that I've picked up over the 20 plus years, 22 years of running um, a graphic design firm, and then of course turning that into a branding agency, and so on and so forth. Now today's topic, the first one, is about creativity, motivation, and inspiration. So I got this from, uh, it's a question from uh, Kemuel Guthrie, um, he's a designer, uh, he's a member on the Brand Builder Academy, um, and this is something that I run. Um, and Camille asks, he says, the important thing I want to know is inspiration, inspiration, inspiration. How to stay creative and motivated on a busy schedule dealing with complicated clients? That's a, that's a great question and it's a great topic, so I decided to do a video. When you're running a graphic design business, uh, it could be a freelance gig, you're a freelancer, or you're running a small firm, or you're running an agency, there comes a time when you sort of feel overwhelmed and you start to lose that inspiration, you start to lose that motivation, the, the kind of zeal that you had um, you know, initially when creativity was flowing and you were inspired and you get up each morning to create, to, to, to create and um, help businesses, you know, get, get ahead through your kind of visual output, right? And then you sort of become busy, um, schedules, projects, tasks, clients, emails, and things like that, and you slowly start to lose that inspiration. You start to lose that motivation because you're being overwhelmed, right? Now, I've been there, um, overwhelmed um, and frustrated uh, sometimes uh, when you're having maybe a creative block or um, when you have too many projects on your hand. And if you're a creative director, for example, you're not only working on your projects, but you're also sort of you're um, uh, 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 managing and giving feedback and uh, motivating team members and directing, uh, you know, story paths and things like that. There's a lot going on. There's, you're juggling a lot of stuff, uh, too many plates in the air, so to speak. And in situations like that, you sort of, that creativity, that inspiration is, is sort of, it takes a back seat while you're trying to put out fires and things like that. So what do you do? I have a few kind of, I won't say tips, it's just these strategies that I've implemented myself. They work quite well for me. And but they are by no means anything unique. They're probably out there uh, already. People might have written about them, maybe made videos. Uh, but I just wanted to share them from my personal perspective. The first one is get a hobby that has nothing to do with design, branding, or business, or anything of that sort, okay? So in my case, I picked, well, first I picked photography, uh, but photography is also creative, right? So for a few years, I had photography to take me out of my projects and my kind of, you know, creative output and into a different world so I could go out uh, because photography needs that, need, needs, uh, you know, uh, you to walk around and, you know, all that. It was fun. It was great. So I was researching cameras, lenses, and then learning photography, of course. And this is going back years and years. And then I would go out and because of photography, I would also travel. So it worked. It worked well. But because photography was also creative, I was sort of getting um, the same kind of vibes in the sense, not frustrations, but 
it was it was flexing the same muscles uh, in the brain or the same neurons in the brain or same connections. Then I so I decided, okay, you know, let me do something different. And travel was one, but more importantly, I picked up wine. Okay, so I I did like wine before, uh, but I took an interest in that. I sort of took it up as a hobby, not just drinking, actually learning about wine. And I got to a stage where, in fact, right now uh, I'm still doing it. Um, I'm doing. Uh, I'm getting certified, and my aim is to become to 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 finish uh, or to complete the course and uh, become a master of wine, which is MW, which is like a it's like a master of engineering, um, MS, master of surgery. Uh, it's it's when you do your graduation in something and then you do the masters. So this is like that, and it has the same process. You go through um, and all that. Okay. Anyway, so why? Because that allows me to take time out of whatever I'm doing to study about wine, about grapes, about grape growing regions, about appellations, about the you know different bottling processes, and in fact vintages and there's a lot, and that keeps me motivated. That keeps me um, sort of energized, and also it gives me the opportunity to travel around the world um, to 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 uh, visit vineyards and to taste different kinds of wines. And in fact, I have something coming up um, uh, pretty soon for um, Tuscany. So I'll be I'll be visiting Tuscany and a lot of vineyards there. Anyway, so the important point is that find a hobby that takes you out of your kind of thing. And that will actually motivate you. That will inspire you. Now you might say, well, you know what? The problem is that I don't have the time, right? That's where most of the problem is coming from because I'm busy working on projects. I'm busy creating. Um, I'm almost getting burnt out. So now here you are telling me to make more time to, you know what? When you're actually feeling overwhelmed with work, when you're actually too busy with projects, with clients, and that is when you need to carve out time away from it. Because the time you carve out to do something else, which is a hobby, not something else in the sense going out with the family to a restaurant, for example, or going to the park with a dog. These are all good, but they don't really, they don't really feed back and inspire you and your work. But when you have a hobby that you go and do where you're actually having to work hard, taking time, and you're doing something where maybe you're learning something or you are doing something active, that will actually inspire um, your creativity. When you read a book or something, which is outside uh, design or branding, you read something or you visit a place or you taste a glass of wine, that will actually trigger some kind of inspiration, some kind of motivation in you. And I always find this. Uh, you know, when I go traveling, um, uh, yeah, traveling is another great thing. Uh, it always inspires me. When I come back, I'm energized, I'm motivated. Okay, enough of that. that that's a, um, I've spent eight minutes talking about that one point, uh, which is, you know, get a hobby outside. Carve out the time, do it. You will feel like you have no time, but you, you have the time. You do have the time. But what happens is when you don't take away time to get energized and motivated through a hobby, not your usual coffee house and, you know, restaurant, then what happens is a project that would that should take you 10 hours would probably take you 20 hours. So when you constantly recharge yourself, when you come back, you'll find that you're more efficient. You're on top of the game. Okay. The next one is um, it's an inspiration killer, a motivation killer. It's something that I, even till today, I struggle with is emails and the anxiety induced by emails. As a creative professional, as a designer, as a brand a builder as a brand expert. Emails are a necessary evil, right? They you need emails, and at the same time, emails induce anxiety. They they create this kind of overwhelming frustration. And in fact, they will take you out of the zone. And all of us have the habit of checking emails 
every single time, right? Right from when you get to work or open up your laptop in the morning, uh, you know, the first thing we do is check emails. And what that does to our creativity is really dampen it, pour cold water. You may read an email from a client who is angry, or you may read an email uh, from a client that says, well, you know what? Yeah, I know we agreed that um, the timeline for this project is four weeks, and uh, you know, I paid you and all that, and you started work. But guess what? There's a, there's a, there's a um, seminar coming up or a trade show coming up, and I need it on Monday. Today's Thursday. I need it next Monday. I don't have four weeks, right? Something like that. And these emails create anxiety. And anxiety is a creativity killer. Believe me, anxiety is the biggest creativity killer. And I'll talk about that in just a second, but let's just focus on emails. So, stop checking your email. Now, I know this is a universal thing. A lot of people say that. Everyone says that, and you know it, right? But I'm saying, really, stop it. Stop checking your emails. In the morning, the first thing, do not ever check emails. Because look, email, we feel compelled, right? It's a, it's a trigger. We think that if I don't check an email, there's, there's probably an email from a client and he's gonna get even more angry or um, there's a fire I need to put out. Yes, you're right. But block off a time in a day to check your emails. And that too, after three or four in the afternoon or whatever time you feel like. And, okay, hang on, let's, let's, let's reverse this. If you are, if you are your best creative, if you are at your best creativity, uh, let's say from 4 p.m. in the evening and all the way through, maybe you sleep at two or three, in the, then that's okay, that's, that's different, right? You get up in the morning, you check your email because then by the time you, you finish your lunch, maybe go out for a jog or play with your dog or whatever, you will have recharged yourself a little bit and get out of that anxiety. But I'm talking about just normal routine, right? If that is the case, then don't check your email. Now, put this down in your contract. Or, or if you don't have contracts, if you, if you don't have a contract with your clients, uh, then you should, you should get a contract. Contracts are a must, absolute must. You should have a contract for even a simple tweak of a design a redesign of a, of a logo, or change the colors, anything, all the way up to building out complete brand strategies and brand identities, visual languages and things like that, right? You always should have a contract, a simple contract, uh, and it should be signed online. So, uh, you know, you could DocuSign, there's, there's lots of, just research them, but, so in your contract, one of the, one of the clauses should be that you will only check your emails once a day, and that too in the afternoon, three, four. And you will always get back within eight business hours or 12 business hours. Not only in your contract, but also make this a part of your initial communication. So before a client pays, after you've gone through negotiations and you know project statements and you know all that, when you're sending your, your um, uh, the invoice, have a, a template, uh, an email template with four or five critical points. And one of those critical points is, so you're saying like this, so before you pay your invoice, please um, uh, 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 check out these four or five points which are very important to the way I work and to the kind of designer I am or to the person I am. And one of those should be to say, emails, um, I will check my emails only once a day, and that too at three or four in the afternoon, and uh, I will get back to you within eight business hours. And so if, I, if you don't, if you email me the night before, and if I don't respond to you during the day, then please understand this is the reason, okay? So put that in there, don't check your emails, do you create to work in the mornings? Do you best create to work in the mornings? Or if you're a normal routine kind of a guy. And then open up emails at around three, four, or a cup of coffee. That way you can mitigate your, your, um, your anxiety and you can handle whatever that comes through, right? So emails, do not check them, handle them, block off a time, and that's it. 
The next one is another big one. Most of us sit at our desks to do our creative work, right? Occasionally we may stand up and write on a whiteboard, uh, but usually we sit down. Um, if you're a freelancer and you're working from home, I'm sure it's the same routine. You have a, a place in your a home where you sit down and then you open up your laptop or you got your, your computer. And if it's uh, an office, if it's a studio, then yes, you know, you have a place where you sit down. I find that that could also be, and that's a very subtle one, you don't realize it, but that is where it is. You fall into a kind of a, um, a trap. The place you sit could end up sucking the, the creativity out of you. So. I would say change it up a little bit. In fact, if you're in a studio, if you're in an office, and if you are a freelancer, then you have the flexibility, just walk out. Grab your laptop and try and do a, a bit of your creativity outside. I know this is not ground baking, but hear me out. So go to the coffee shop or go to the park if the weather permits. Uh, if you're in places like New York or London uh, where it's either raining or it's cold or whatever for most of the for most of the year, then you know, okay, you can't just go out into the nature and try, try to find a coffee shop or a wine bar or something where during the day, usually they'll be, don't go to Starbucks. Now Starbucks used to be a great place ages ago because they have free Wi-Fi and all that. No. In fact, you don't need free Wi-Fi. In fact, shut off the Wi-Fi on your laptop. I'm talking about creativity, right? These are not productivity tips. Productivity tips are different. This is creativity, how to get back inspiration and motivation and your creativity. So what I do typically is, yeah, I, I lounge out throughout the studio and that's how our studio is built anyway. Um, before that we were in WeWork and we still have WeWork in our London office and WeWork of course has creative spaces. So encourage uh, if you're running a company, encourage your designers to, to you know, walk around, to sit around, and yourself go around. So change it up and do not just sit in one place. Get out of the office or studio if you can. And uh, you don't necessarily have to actually do any creative work there. If you want to get inspired, do some reading. Yeah, Take a half hour out, go read a book. Read how, for example, the noble rot, which is botrytis, it's a fungus that develops on grapes um, in certain regions of the world because of uh, moisture and you know fog or something like that. And actually, you might think fungus, the, those, those grapes are destroyed. Actually, it leads to this alcoholic concentration uh, within the grapes. They, they sort of dry out um, so that the alcohol, uh, the, sh the sugar, sorry, is is concentrated and those actually lead to some of the best wines out there. Read about that. Get a book on that. Get a book, a thick book on botrytis, right? Or whatever. You know, whatever is your, if your hobby is, I don't know, uh, let's say you're learning to sail. Yeah, one time I did it. I, I went and I tried to learn sailing um, and if that is the one, then take a book and uh, let me show you something, right? The World Atlas of Wine, 8th edition, right? Uh, or, <laughs> I don't know, let me open this, I, because I took out, the, I took out the, um, the cover on this. The Oxford Companion to White, uh, to Wine. Okay, so it's a thick book. It's, yeah, it's, it's like a dictionary. Yes, those are my reading um, kind of uh, uh, reading uh, companions when I want to recharge. So, yeah, so read something. Read, I don't know, about how um, taxation in... Uh, in uh, the 16th century actually led to this so-called kind of um, Catholicism uh, and then being moved away and Protestantism coming in, 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 in England, Henry, whatever. Yeah, something that has got nothing to do with business or branding or design or anything of that sort, okay? So 
just switching up, changing, that is important. Another one which I find really uh, helpful in inspiring me and motivating me is joining groups. And for this one, yeah, um, you might want to, you could join the groups of, for example, your hobby, um, but you could also join groups within the, the, the market segment. So within creativity, design, branding, and things like that to help each other, to motivate each other. And if you can't find a good one, start one yourself. Like for example, this Brand Builder Academy is such an academy. This is for insp insp inspiration. This is for motivation. And when I make videos and when I talk about my experience of running an agency and all that, it's not because I know more than you or it's not because, oh, I've been, you know, I know everything. It's not that. It's sharing and I keep asking questions. And this is where we inspire each other. This is where we motivate each other. So um, join a group, uh, find a group with similar kind of um, um, values and similar aims and where inspiration and motivation is paramount to then just don't join groups where people are posting their designs, asking for critiques and you know, I mean, join that for a separate reason, not for this reason, not for motivation and inspiration because that actually will induce anxiety. That will take away creativity and in fact, will waste your time most of the time. Um, so yeah, these are just a few of the things, I, like I said at the beginning of this video, they're not groundbreaking or they're not unique. And you don't need unique things. You need things that work. These are from my perspective. These are things that, are, that, are, that really helped me even till today. And uh, yeah, if you have any in insight on this, if you have missed anything, please leave comments below and let me know what you do to get inspired, to get motivated, um, to keep the creative juices flowing, to recharge, to be your best because at the end of the day, as designers, as creative professionals, as brand builders, we have a, a divine duty to our customers, to, 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 the, to the designs that we put out in this world, right? We have a, a sacred duty not to put out trash and garbage and not to pollute the, the visual or, or, or the design world, right? And we can only do that if we are at our best. Like a, like a finely kind of sharpened knife, right? Which cuts through, through uh, I don't know, a slab of meat. If you use a blunt one or if you use a bread knife, you're gonna have this raggedness, it's, it's messy. No, we gotta be finely tuned instruments. And to be finely tuned, we gotta be always inspired, motivated. We got to be at our best, all right? Okay, enough of pontificating. I will leave you now and uh, yeah. Let me know if you have any other similar questions that I can do a video on. Take care. Till next time.